watching NRA TV with Bill Whittle. Hey everybody, welcome to uh, Hot Mike. I'm Bill Whittle. Hot Mike's having a dentist appointment right now. We hope to have him in by the second half of the show. But until then, I will be hosting this program for you. And, uh, you know, another day, another few idiots to knock down, right? The uh, great thing about being in this line of work, actually, is that you know you're never going to run out of product. There's always going to be somebody saying something stupid, treasonous, uh, infantile, disgusting, all the rest. Uh, and most of it comes from that uh, beautiful city you see right behind me here, which is genuinely just over the hill. We're recording live from Los Angeles today. And so welcome to the show. Uh, why don't we just get started with our latest adventure in pop culture intersection with actual treasonous activities and the glorification of the people who really, really should be in jail for being very, very bad folks. You may or may not have heard about this um, leak or this security leak. I don't. I'm not smart enough to make these things up. Her name is Reality Winner. Reality Winner is her name. Um, I've got some serious questions about both of those names, to be honest with you, as far as this young lady goes. But if you haven't heard of Reality Winner, Reality Winner is a young woman who was employed by a um, private security firm. She had a she had a confidential had a, a security clearance rather. And so she decided to leak all kinds of stories about Donald Trump because she's a big Bernie Sanders supporter. And, you know, it's one thing to be a Bernie supporter. I mean, you know, the guy's an out and out and out avowed, proud socialist. I'm not entirely sure that people who are really, really, really into bringing socialism into this country should have a uh, security clearance in the first place. But it gets a little more interesting than that. Uh, we found out after she was arrested that Reality Winner had a notebook talking about how much she sympathized with ISIS. Now, you may wonder why somebody would take those kind of chances, risking, um, you know, arrest by releasing top secret national security documents to the press in order to further her own personal political agenda. But in an interview with her mom, I think it was with her mom, she she basically gave her um, her motivation. And that was she didn't think she was going to get punished for it because this is a direct quote. She thinks she's too pretty, too white and too cute to go to jail. Well, justice is blind. Apparently uh, she's being held um, without bail. Uh, She's not too pretty, too cute, too white to go to jail. Uh, if she has such a serious problem with Donald Trump and his administration, I am fondly of the hope that she will get to um, spare herself from all of it and be released in 20, you say 2024, somewhere around there, uh, whenever whenever Donald Trump gets out of office. So look, what do we have here? We've got we've got basically a stupid teen who never should have gotten a security clearance in the first place. Just a dumb young girl. And one of the ways you can tell she's a dumb young girl is because she talks about her sympathies with ISIS. Now, as it turns out, and this one is not so funny, I'm afraid. There's nothing funny about this story either, for that matter. But there were uh, several stories, and one of which, which I thought was very, very sad, was several months ago. These two uh, young German women, these two young, pretty white women, decided that they wanted to be um, Islamic brides and go to the Middle East and fight for ISIS. No fooling. They thought it would be romantic and adventurous. And so many of the men in uh, in their countries were just not men at all. They're just kind of, you know, uh, males. And so these two um, young, pretty German girls decided to go and join ISIS. And um, they were basically immediately gang raped and held as sex slaves. And when they tried to escape, they were killed. I don't want that to happen uh, to Reality Street. I'm sorry, Reality Winner. But I'd like to her to read about it. Now, here's where the cheese gets binding, as they used to say. Uh, it's one thing to be a stupid teen with no experience in the world and do stupid things like this, just kind of on the on the belief that you're not going to get caught for it. But you can count on Hollywood being there to back the most god awful situations in America. If there's something that's bad for the country, you pretty much be assured that Hollywood has a lot of people who are 100% behind it. So that brings us to Rosie O'Donnell, who you may remember from a show that failed and who was actually hired uh, as the um, as Betty Rubble in the, uh, I think it's the first time I saw her, she was hired as Betty Rubble in one of the Flintstone movies. She looked like she ate Betty Rubble. Uh, but in any event, Rosie O'Donnell is not just your average left winger. Uh, Rosie is a genuine, over-the-top nutcase. 
And Rosie O'Donnell is praising Reality Winner, and she's saying that Reality Winner is very brave. As a matter of fact, Rosie O'Donnell made a contribution to Reality Winner's GoFundMe page. You'll be pleased to know that if you are a trader and, uh, and a liar and a security risk and all the other things, an ISIS supporter, you'll be pleased to know that in America today, that doesn't mean you're not going to make a ton of money because we can start a GoFundMe praise, a page. Rather, There you see citizens from around the country and around the world have already pledged $37,153 just as we begin to tape this in order to provide for her um, well-being. By the way, just below that, on her um, description, the family says, this is a very tough time for a reality winner, and we need some help to help her get through these tough times and provide some support and so on and so forth. She's going to have some tough times in prison. By the way, um, I just just flew into my head as an idea. Is there any chance, I wonder, if we could start our own GoFundMe page? And what we would do is we would collect money from the American people so that we could send people to prison to talk to Reality Winner and give her a fundamental basic outline of what Islam is and what ISIS is. We give her a little historical background of ISIS. We could show her some pictures of people being beheaded. We could talk a little bit about the United States of America and the history and the people who are at risk. We could introduce her to some special forces guys who may be going to be killed because of her releasing information because she's such a petulant child that she just decided to do this. I think if we started a GoFundMe page to keep Reality uh, Winner in jail and make sure she learned a little bit about life while she was in there, I think we could do brisk business. However, um, Rosie O'Donnell is the kind of person who supports all these things, and so why? Why would she do that? Rosie does things like that because Rosie, grown woman, really grown woman, is exactly as stupid as this what is she, 19, 20, 20-year-old, 20 22-year-old girl? She's just that dumb. She believes all these things, believes Donald Trump is Hitler, and believes that um, standing up and releasing national secrets uh, and being in favor of ISIS is just grand. So it's one thing to be a young, stupid teen, and it's another thing to be a much older, much stupider, much more well-known celebrity idiot who once again is on the wrong side of history, wrong side of morality, wrong side of everything, and you think they get tired of it after a while, but apparently no. This is a, a fund that just keeps renewing itself. So on to our next story. As you probably heard, uh, Donald Trump was going to visit the UK, but he was prevented from visiting the United Kingdom because of massive protests against his presence. Um, and there's only one problem uh, with that news story. There's one detail actually not quite correct with that. And the detail is it's not true. It's just plain not true. So let's bring in our guest uh, for today. He's a remarkable gentleman, Dr. David Grantham of the National Center for Policy Analysis. David, good to see you. Thanks for being on the show. Uh, I know this must come as a deep, deep shock to you, <laughs> but it looks like the mainstream media got a story wrong. Yeah, well, thanks for having me, first of all. Yes, uh, it, it's becoming a pattern, it seems like, after the recent testimony of James Comey where we learned that CNN and New York Times both published articles that were uh, inherently incorrect, if not, you know, majority of the of the narrative was incorrect. And I think, and this is just my speculation, but I think what the U.S., what, what American readers, consumers are learning is that uh, the media is not as sophisticated as once thought in that, you know, they, they were supposedly doing uh, significant research into these stories and putting together a, a three and four peer-reviewed, uh, backstopped, interviewed, et cetera, et cetera. And it turns out when it comes down to ideology or when it comes down to uh, what now is becoming the Donald Trump uh, derangement syndrome, there's no level to the, uh, to the manner in which the media and others will go to... Uh, uh, apparently either falsify or just knowingly publish something that has been verified. You know, David, you said that these, um, these mainstream news media people aren't as sophisticated as once thought. I suspect they've always been this stupid, and I suspect they've always been this biased. But what's new is the feedback loop of the Internet, right? This is new. They, they haven't had to deal with this before. The most remarkable thing I ever saw, uh, David, maybe you can give me some, some, uh, some insight into this, because it is a question of having, we now have watchdogs who are watching the people who are supposed to be the watchdogs. But back in the 2004 election when George Bush was accused of being AWOL from the Texas Air National Guard, 
CBS News ran with that story, and mm -hmm. they made the mistake of putting up the document. There was a, a memo from the Texas Air National Guard, presumably written in 1968 or something, saying that George Bush was essentially away without official leave. And they posted the letter online. Well, as it turns out, it was whatever the squadron number was, let's just say 1168th. And instead of a TH, which is what you would type on a typewriter, it was the uppercase TH the way that a computer would do it with a typesetting thing. So somebody wrote, somebody noticed that, somebody else wrote out the letter in Microsoft Word, printed it, did a one-to-one -one overlap. Somebody on, on the CBS team said, well, it could have been done by the IBM Selectric. And the guy stands up and says, couldn't have been done by the IBM Selectric. How do you know? Well, I'm the engineer of the IBM Selectric. I designed the IBM Selectric. The reason I bring all this up, David, is because the internet now is a series of people who have expert opinions about things and the press simply cannot make a statement anymore, have it be wrong and sweep it under the table if you get a correction on page 17. Yeah, they're, when I say that they don't, I guess the, uh, the issue with sophistication is at least that they're being exposed for not having it. And, and I think you, to your point, it could have been going on for a long time. It's just now being affirmed by uh, outside, uh, quote unquote, amateur media and and the, the watchers who are watching them to ensure that uh, they're producing quality uh, research. And I think the the Watergate scandal, for example, uh, two of the leading uh, newspaper uh, writers who followed that have have come out and said that the the slant against Trump is just becoming uh, obnoxious, and they said they really need to reel it back in. I think that's the some of the old school thinking is saying, even though you may dislike him, you need to report the news and report facts. No one's going to, your, your trust will erode quickly, especially this day and age, but it can be verified within minutes. Uh, I think your example of that was, uh, was probably one of the first major issues where they said, this was written on a typewriter and someone quickly looked at it and said, no, this was Microsoft Word. And uh, I think that was a, a really a, a breaking point in some ways. It absolutely was. That's why I brought it up. And the thing that's so remarkable about that, Dan Rather and CBS News said, well, who's coordinating this? It must be the White House is coordinating this. Nobody's coordinating it. A guy on, um, on uh, Free Republic, a guy named Buckhead, I want to say, basically noticed it and he made a post about it and then somebody else got a hold of it and they did the selectric thing and then they did the it all just happened it assembled itself it's kind of a weird sort of a of a group um intelligence uh david we're gonna take a break but when we come back i want to talk a little bit about some of the motiv uh, motivation behind this kind of fake news and the whole idea of fake news and it being called out and so on so if you can stick with us for a few moments we'll be back this is bill whittle's hot mic on nra tv one second, nothing is going on. The next second, the quick trip's on fire, the meat market's on fire. In 2009, my husband was murdered right in front of me by a man who was stalking me. She was still waiting for her permit to be approved long after New Jersey's 30-day waiting period had passed. Even a stable society like America's is really on a razor's edge. Our history is that we have always utilized and exercised our right to bear arms because it's been life or death. When a criminal starts misusing me, I am going to use whatever necessary to get that criminal off my back. The firearm is the only thing that gives me a fighting chance. Gun laws that only apply to the law-abiding citizens. How can that be right? You know, trust their soldiers stateside carry weapons on military bases. I mean, that's insane. It doesn't say the right of the property owner to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. It is the right of the people. So yes, it applies to all of us. You've been warned. You might learn something. Your determination to defend individual freedom joined with the other issues at the very heart of this race, ensured that only one candidate could receive the approval of the American people, Donald Trump. The disgraceful media attempted to manipulate your emotions. They tried to suppress your enthusiasm, your speech, your vote, but you would not be distracted from the core freedom 
that was truly at stake. And for that, you deserve the gratitude of the entire nation. You proved the founders right, that the ultimate check and balance in this country is the American people. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Bill Whittle's Hot Mike. In our second segment, we've uh, been talking with Dr. David Grantham of the National Center for Policy Analysis, been talking about news bias. And David, I, I want to talk to you about something a, a little bigger, because frankly, we can and have and will continue to point out these stories and show people how, how news is being orchestrated, fabricated, and all the rest. But I'd like to get your opinion on motivation. Why? Why are they doing this? I have a theory. I kind of like to hear yours. The first time I heard the term fake news that I can remember hearing it was when Hillary Clinton announced, what, two, three days after she lost the most winnable election in history, apparently, that it was all a result of fake news about all of her server problems and everything. Why do you think this bias is so widespread? And why do you think that the mainstream media is destroying their product? Their product is credibility. That's what they sell. Why is what is the motivation to to go this far over the edge so often? That's a great question, and I, I wish I had a succinct answer for you, but I, I often point back to, it's kind of a philosophical uh, answer, if you will, but I often point back to the difference between uh, your political identity and uh, identity politics and the love of your country or, or the, f the framework that you live under, uh, under a constitutional republic. And it's kind of high-minded, but at the same time, I think it really explains and helps anticipate where these ideas come from and these reactions. Because when you look at identity politics, when your identity is wrapped up in, in the politics of it, then there is no level of, of disregard that you will reach because at the end of the day, your identity is really all you have versus looking at it as we have a country to protect, we have uh, to provide something, uh, a semblance of truth within a, within a world that's lacking of it. And the U.S. really represents that by far and away more than any other country and nation in, in the history of the world. So, but when your ideas are wrapped up in identity politics and the fact that those politics define who you are, then when someone comes along like Donald Trump, who is probably one of the more abrasive and one of the more promising uh, individuals who could break through that identity and cripple what you've built your identity on, big government, big spending, uh, then that becomes a problem for you internally and as a person, not just merely as, a, as an operation. Yeah, I think that's right. And when the leftists started their takeover of America, through the culture, they began with journalism schools. They realized if they could teach young journalists to be leftists and progressives, then they could basically control the information flow. The best spin you can put on this, in my opinion, is that is that reporters, these left-wing reporters, think that there's the truth, and then there's the truth. And the little truth is what actually happens, but the big truth is what should happen. And if the little truth and the big truth don't agree, then you make up the actual truth because of your your big objective. I mean, that's, I think, the very best possible spin you can put on it. I think the worst spin you can put on it is, is that these people are absolutely terrified that Donald Trump has circumvented them and has gone around them, that he's tweeting directly to the American public. And, and not only is he putting them essentially out of work, but he's mocking them while he's doing it. And while they're used to being criticized, I don't think they're used to being laughed at. You think these, these reporters, the New York Times and Washington Post, by the way, Washington Post's um, uh, banner mo uh, uh, motto now is um, democracy dies in darkness, which I, I happen to think is, is their, their mission statement. Um, but what about it? Do you think it's personal? Because it certainly seems personal. They don't like the fact that Donald Trump plays this game better than they do, I think. Oh, it's absolutely, you can, it's absolutely personal. Uh, who's involved and the extent of it, you know, maybe is... Uh, negotiable, but it, it's definitely personal because the the level and the vitriol that's that's emanating from the media uh, outlets is is I shouldn't say surprising, but it, it kind of is. 
I think the the real key though is seeing that we are at a junction, we're at a turning point, and in our political history and our economic history, we've come to a point where we have to make some very tough, very hard decisions. And there is one side that is that has for a long time advocated for more and more government, more and more spending. Mm -hmm. They see that realized with President Obama. They were getting there. And then when Bernie Sanders comes along, he's offering, uh, you know, like Rush Limbaugh says, it's hard to it's hard to run against Santa Claus. And that's what Sanders was representing. So they saw uh, almost the, the culmination of their of their wildest dreams from Obama to Sanders. And then Hillary would at least have maintained what Obama had, had built. Trump's coming along and just putting a wrecking ball to that type of spending. And I, that's just one example. But I think when you when you're on the 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 edge of what you believe to be a final uh, answer and, and uh, all your dreams are looking to be realized, and someone comes through and just takes the opposite yeah. direction, you can't respond to that with just a mere uh, facts-driven analysis. No, that's exactly right, David. There, you, the, uh, This is what the news media people, the Hollywood celebrities, and the Democratic politicians have in common. And that's this emotional immaturity that does not allow them to deal with defeat, and they simply have to have a temper tantrum and stamp their feet. The good news is, is that they're not being able to get away with it anymore, thanks to people like you and the work you do over at the um, National Center for Policy Analysis. So thank you so much for joining us today, and I'm sure we're going to have a lot to talk about in the future. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. You know, folks, that's really pretty much it. They, um, they are... This is personal for them. They hate the idea that the American people spoke up and went against their wishes. That's why Hollywood is so upset. That's why the news media is so upset. And that's why these politicians, Republicans as well in many cases, are so upset. Donald Trump bothers them. They think it's because of his personality. But what really bothers them about Donald Trump, I think, is the presence of Donald Trump when they have all together decided, you know, all the smart people who went to Harvard and know each other and go to the same cocktail parties. Well, those people decided who the next president was going to be, and there didn't seem to be much in doubt. Hollywood was behind it. Washington was behind it. The New York news media was behind it. All the important people were behind it. And those American people, those rotten low-life scoundrels, got up on their hind legs and, and, and just ran the whole thing off the rails. How dare they? How dare they tell us how to tell them how to run the country? That's what happened. That's why they'll never get over it. I hope they never get over it. It's fun, It's really fun watching heads explode. Hey, speaking of exploding heads, um, turns out that we've got some two good news stories uh, that we talked about last week. The stories are horrible, but the results are kind of cool. Let's, uh, let's talk about the first one. Um, as you probably know, uh, we talked last week about a, a show that's running in the um, Shakespeare in the Park in New York City. It's one of the nice things about New York City is open air Shakespeare presentations. They are doing a production of Julius Caesar, and as you probably remember from your Shakespeare, because most of our audience has read books as opposed to most of the other audiences on the other side, as you can see here, this one is set in the present day. That's not unusual, but the blonde wigged uh, Caesar is being knifed to death, and, um, and guess who that person is? Well, it's Donald Trump. And the reason we know it's Donald Trump is not just because he looks like Donald Trump, but the actor who plays him has played Donald Trump on many other occasions. So here's a chance for those New York City tolerance-loving, accepting, peace-loving progressives to really get a chance to watch Donald Trump being repeatedly knifed to death and cheer away. Well, unfortunately for them in this production, the sponsors of this show, many of them have been sponsors for quite a long time, have decided, you know what, this has actually crossed a line, and we all know what's going on here. Don't lie to us. The producers of the show saying, we're not inciting violence or suggesting any violence towards the president's. Spare me, please. If you're going to lie to me like that, come lie to my face so I can answer. Of course you are. Of course you are. This is, this is, Progressive murder porn is what it is. We didn't mean to suggest that this is the president or that we intended any violence towards him. Please, please, we're not as stupid as you think we are. We couldn't be. So there's that. But the good news is Bank of America, psh, out of there. Delta Airlines said, no, nah, this crosses a line and this isn't art. This is just plain 
disgraceful, and we're out of there. So thank you, Delta Airlines. Thank you, Bank of America. And if we keep up the pressure, there will be more of these people removing their sponsorship. Let's be crystal clear about this, by the way. These people have a right to produce Shakespeare any way they want to. They absolutely do. They have a right to put on a show and stage it any way they want to do it. And if they want to do that, so long as they're not openly calling for the murder of the president, that is their artistic right, and it's defended by the First Amendment, a lot of our finest people have died defending their right to be this obnoxious and this terrible. However, we have a right to free speech, too. And our right to free speech says that we can protest this. We can demand that these, that these things are stopped. We can, we can talk about boycotting these sponsors. And we have, and it has a great effect. And a smaller uh, case, same story, though. We talked to you also last week about a lovely man named, uh, was it Rez? Yeah, Rez Aslan, host of a CNN show, their resident zombie. He ate human brains on television, this guy who called Donald Trump a piece of uh, S, and he called his son a piece of S, and he said, oh, I just lost my temper. No, he's made plenty of quotes like that. Turns out he was fired from the one job he was able to manage to put together, which was talking about religion and tolerance. Can't make this kind of stuff up, folks. So he's gone too. So that's good news. And altogether, I think what it really shows us is this. We have been swallowing this nonsense from these people. Nonsense is the kindest word I can come up with at the moment off the top of my head for coming on 40 years now. But as we mentioned earlier with, with our guest, the internet is the first time in history when common people can talk to each other, when people like you and people like me who didn't go to Harvard Law School but were smarter than they are, we have a chance now to talk to each other and to fight back. We have a chance to fight back and communicate and organize. That's what the NRA is. It's what the NRA is about, what it's always been about. And the idea that the National Rifle Association, which has been, in my mind, the single greatest defender of our Second Amendment rights, well, without question, that's obviously true, is now, in fact, turning out to be one of the biggest defenders of our First Amendment rights as well, and one of our defenders of our rights to have actual information and all the rest of these things. You know, the media is supposed to be the immune system of, of the body. It's supposed to be the cells that go out and root out the truth and destroy lies. The, prob the, pro the, uh, the job of the media, as it was well said, is to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comfortable. Doesn't say anything about only if they're Democrats or only if they're Republicans. When the country loses its immune system, you get these kind of autoimmune diseases like we've got now. But fortunately, the American people are rising up and coming through us through things like the Internet and like this program and like this network. So I'm enormously proud to be a part of it. Thank you very much for joining us today on Bill Whittle's Hot Mike. We'll be back tomorrow. There'll be more news and more idiocy for us to puncture, and we'll do it with a big smile on our face because it's kind of fun. We'll see you tomorrow. Hey, hey, name. Yeah, second time I've been a couple seconds late. So we I really should be wrapping this thing up and be out, 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 out at twenty seven fifteen, right? At the latest. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah, that sounds good, and that gives me a little bit of room. But um, I I hadn't been factoring the close either. I keep thinking, you know, be out of this, but it's a twenty minute close. A uh, twenty second, twenty minute feels like twenty minutes. It's a twenty second close, and um, and so we'll be scheduled for that. Um, is there is there plan to do a debrief call today, or are we on are we on the rails here? Do you think? I don't need to. I have to go to the dentist. I can do it from the road, but as far as I'm concerned, I think it's just another one. Okay, there you go. Isn't that simple and easy? Okay, thank you so much. Great, great seeing you guys. We will see you tomorrow. Take care.